All right, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena and back to another historic brawl video as well. Super excited for today's video. Uh, we're actually going to be playing a combo list and it's uh, quite a tilt inducing one. I think it's been doing the rounds. I don't know. Um, I saw it posted at one point and figured I would build my own version of it and it's gone well. I'm 10 and 0 with this deck so far. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's going to stop. So, let's talk about it. Today we're going to be playing around with a deck that I call Don't Hurt Me. Um, it's with my little gnome friend, uh, Oswald Fiddlebender. Two mana, two, two, with magical tinkering. You can pay white and tap it to sacrifice an artifact. And then you search your library for an artifact card with mana value equal to one plus the sacrificed artifact's mana value. And then put it onto the battlefield. You can only do this... At sorcery speed so that's actually somewhat irrelevant in a lot of situations so yeah this is my uh, this is my gnome friend and uh, he's part of a degenerate combo um, at first I actually when I looked at this card I went through all of the artifacts that you could play with Oswald Fiddlebender mostly for constructed actually uh, less so for brawl and uh, I did originally notice that the only cards that were really um, really good with Fiddlebender is you could turn a 3-drop into a 4-drop. Um, so that's kind of ramp there. And you could get Paradox Engine. And I thought to myself, well, that's that's good enough, but ah, what, what's that really going to do? As it turns out, uh, it does a lot. So, yeah, this is a combo deck, and I will fully admit right now, even I, at this point, 10-0, no losses, still do not fully understand this combo. So I'm going to kind of give you a rough idea of what's going to happen, and then hopefully the games today are going to explain it for you. I'm going to show you, not tell you. I think that's probably the better way that we can do it. So as I mentioned, uh, Oswald can get Paradox Engine, and it can get that off of any three or four drop artifact, because every single time we sack an artifact, we get one mana plus. So Paradox Engine says whenever you cast a spell, you untap all non-land permanents you control. So if you think about uh, the way that Emery works in Brawl, uh, it basically plays an artifact out of the graveyard and uh, you have a Paradox Engine in play. So once you play that card out of the graveyard, you untap Emery and all the mana rocks that you've generated and you try to chain infinite like that. Fiddlebender is the exact same way, but in white and a little bit more expensive and a little bit harder to kill and harder to recast. So I would say it's probably strictly worse than uh, Emery, but Emery's a very powerful commander anyway. So, you know, that's not saying too much. What we do have in uh, in white, though, is a lot of protection spells in the early game, which helps us keep Oswald Fiddlebender alive because uh, we can win with this uh, combo as early as turn four uh, if we can manipulate it. Uh, in such a way. So Paradox Engine is going to untap all of our mana rocks. We've got lots of mana rocks in Replicating Ring, Relic, Geode, uh, Letter of Acceptance, Banner, uh, Chromatic Lantern, Altar of the Pantheon, and lots of two-drop ones as well. Uh, every single two-drop artifact mana rock in the format, actually, as it turns out, because uh, we really do want to be generating as much mana as possible. But yeah, the first thing that we're going to do is on turn two, if we feel like he's not going to die, is play Oswald Fiddlebender. When he gets to untap, we're going to play a three mana mana rock, and immediately we're going to sack it and turn it into a Fireman's Vessel or a Hedron Archive. That's actually ramp for us. So after that, we're going to float that mana. We're going to then uh, sack the four drop with Fiddlebender to get out our Paradox Engine and see where we can go from there. Once we can generate more mana than we're spending, we have infinite mana. So uh, we've got something like Ancestral Statue, which is a 4-mana 3-4 that enters the battlefield and returns a non-land permanent you control to its owner's hand, which can include itself. If we can generate 5 mana, uh, then Ancestral ma uh, Statue will produce uh, 1 mana every single time we cast it, so infinite mana that way. And with a Paradox Engine, that's also infinite un untaps as well, which means we can use Fiddlebender uh, to sack all of our other artifacts every time we play the Ancestral Statue to find the pieces we need. So how do we win the game? Well, Ancestral Statue is the main way that we do that. So we're going to be playing this, 
and returning it and playing it and returning it. As long as we can at least be mana neutral, we can kind of win the game with that combo using Aetherflux Reservoir. Surprise, surprise, I'm sure most of you <laughs> saw this one coming from a mile off. When it comes to uh, Paradox Engine, Aetherflux Reservoir is usually not too far behind because they kind of go hand in hand and it's probably just the best way to win the game. Um, if we were in blue, like Emery, uh, we could use Infinite Draw to then go Thassa's Oracle, because I think it's not banned in Historic Brawl at the moment. So that would be a line of play. Uh, in white, I don't believe we have really a good way of winning the game. Um, other than just going off with the combo, because I would say at least half of, the, uh, half of my 10 wins were due to our opponents scooping before I'd even pulled off the combo. Apparently, Oswald's known enough that uh, everyone's an expert at this combo, and I'm playing and I don't understand it, so probably I would imagine you should never all actually scoop to uh, Oswald going off, because it's it's not easy. It's certainly not easy. So yeah, the general goal is we're going to try and get these three cards out with four mana worth of mana rocks in play, and that's our win con. The rest of the deck is all about protecting Oswald, so we've got God's Willings, Alcides, Mana Tithe. I have got someone with Mana Tithe and it was glorious. Uh, we got Sheltering Lights, Selfless Saviors, all of that kind of thing, and uh, lots of ways of drawing cards. Oh, we even have a Mirror Shield as well, so we can turn a Terrarion into a Mirror Shield. Uh, this gives Hexproof to Fiddlebender, so this is kind of our Lightning Boots. Lightning Greaves, that's the ones. Um, this is our version of Lightning Greaves uh, on a budget. Uh, so that's very useful. We've got uh, brought back. You won't see that in today's video, but uh, this this card has definitely won me a game or two because uh, obviously you're going to be sacking with Oswald Fiddlebender, and for two mana, which should be easy to produce, you can get back two of the things that Oswald has sacrificed along the way. So really, just undoing the damage you've dealt to yourself, essentially. Uh, I did mention, I think, that we've got Mystic Forge in here as well, so if you've ever seen like the Colorless Paradox Engine combo in Constructed, uh, this is definitely a part of that. Look at the top card of your library at any time, and you can cast artifact spells and colorless spells from the top of your library, and you can also manipulate the top with the Pay 1, Exile the top card of your library, as well as Oswald, uh, that will shuffle your library, so Mystic Forge uh, can hopefully go a fair bit through your deck. We've got a lot of artifacts in here. We've got 38 out of 100 cards, so uh, on the lower end of most Mystic Forge decks, but uh, if you can get like two or three hits on this uh, every turn or every other turn, you're still getting your value out of it. Uh, that's like drawing a million cards, and it's something that can help you rebuild in the late game as well uh, if your opponent has destroyed your stuff. Uh, yeah, Oswald, to a certain extent, does get around kind of command attacks, which makes him very tilt-inducing, um, because obviously we're a mana rock deck. Every time you kill Fiddlebender, it costs two more to cast him, but uh, our entire game plan is about putting in rocks that generate as one mana. So if we make our land drop and we play a mana rock, we've uh, covered the command attacks for Oswald to come down again. So uh, you can be a little bit more aggressive with your Fiddlebender casts with this list, Um but not too aggressive. If you got if you got like a, a God's Willing or an Alcide or something like that, usually it's best to wait for Fiddlebender um, if you think that there is a chance that uh, he could die. Other than that, though, um, if we go into the late game, we can control the board to buy ourselves a little bit of time. We've got some board wipes in Day of Judgment, Wrath of God, and Settle the Wreckage. Uh, we've got ways of preventing our opponent from destroying or disrupting our combo in like Banishing Light. Minimus Containment, you can actually use this on one of your own non-artifact permanents to make it an artifact, uh, which is really useful there. Um, I thought that was quite a nice little technique. Uh, we got the Immortal Sun, if we really want to turn our Gilded Lotus into that, if our opponent's playing Super Friends, that's an option. Uh, as a worst case, sometimes we have to sack our Gilded Lotus, so it's nice to have an option. So either Immortal Sun or Dreamstone Hedron uh, ends up producing three mana there and drawing three cards, so that's also very useful. Um, we have Scrap Trawler in here as well. And so probably the last thing I talk about with this deck. Uh, whenever a Scrap Trawler or another artifact you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, which is what Oswald's doing, return to your hand target artifact from your graveyard with lesser mana value. So sack a three drop, you get a two drop back to your hand. Easy peasy. We've got Ica Wellsprings, Terrarians, Chromatic Spheres. Uh, all of these will draw cards. Uh, so this allows us to uh, refill our hand and allow us to go off. Um, I would say... This deck doesn't go off 
consistently on turn four, or at least it hasn't for me quite a lot of the time, but it's not too difficult to pull off the combo. As I said, I, even I, after 10 games and 10 wins, still don't fully understand this combo, but it's working. And as long as it's working, it's doing well. It's probably uh, lower weighted by wizard standards than it should be. I think uh, it is a combo deck that should be uh, put up against things that are far more um, prepared to defeat it. At the moment, a lot of the matchmaking puts us up against jank decks uh, that run out of removal very quickly because they're trying to do a thing without uh, stopping your opponent from doing a thing, uh, which is where this deck certainly uh, shines. So, yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you do, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content like this in the future, and without further ado, let's get to the games. This video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks, bonus videos, polls on future content, or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month, then hit the join button down below, or check out the Patreon link in the description. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. Alrighty then, we're in, and this hand keeps Fiddlebender alive and interacts with our opponent, who is playing a commander I don't think we can beat. Um, other than that though, doesn't do enough. So we're going to take the free mull on that, and this kind of looks a lot better. It's got the reservoir in a hand, which is not where we want it to be. Uh, we can get Fiddlebender down on two. We can answer some stuff. Protect Fiddlebender with uh, the mirror shield. Sure. We'll see how we do with this one. Snow covered swamp and pass. Alright, planes and pass. What's well, the colorless manner? It's not really going to matter for this hand though. Each opponent discards a card. Trying to think if I have a way of returning the reservoir to my hand. Off the top of my head, I don't think I do. Let's get rid of the baffling end. And yeah, I'm just gonna jam Fiddlebender. I feel like he's probably gonna die, but listen to that beautiful gnome boy. If he doesn't immediately die, if our opponent just goes for like Croxer or something like that, then we get to go Chromatic Lantern into Firemine's Vessel. But, yeah, he's got to have to die here, right? Yep. So now we'll just go Chromatic Lantern, which will pay for the Fiddlebender anyway. Faceless Haven. I guess I do have Buried Ruin in my hand, so that's a good reason to discard the Reservoir, which is not currently part of our game plan right now. It'd be nice if I could get my opponent to tap out, play Fiddlebender, and equip the Mirror Shield so we have Hexproof on it. That should do a lot for us, honestly. So here comes Croxer. We know we got the Buried Ruin, so now I'm just going to discard the Reservoir. If it gets Exiled, then we've got a little bit more of a, an issue, for sure. So what do I want? I literally just want a Mana Rock. The bigger the better, I think. I'm just going to go and put Croxer in the command zone, which I think is correct. Hello, bigger the better. Alright, so that's Gilded Lotus. That adds three mana. And that allows me to play the Mirror Shield. And then if my opponent's turn is Croxer, go. My turn is Fiddlebender, equip shield, go. And then I think we've got everything we need to win the game from here. Won't win immediately. Uh, we'll still take an extra turn, but... Yeah, our opponent's going to have to do a little bit more. I don't think they're going to play the Croxer. I don't think they can afford to do that. I do notice that they've got a... Oh. Oh. Hang about. <laughs> uh, I do notice that they've got a return, which can exile my Aether Flux Reservoir, which is certainly annoying. Uh, I think I might just take the turn to get it out of my graveyard now, while they can't do all about it. 
Unless they've got a uh, cling to dust. That feels like the correct thing to do. Okay, then we get to go Arch of Araska. We're going to dump the Paradox Engine into play. And hope they have no artifact removal. I mean, they haven't up until this point, so... Yeah, my line is essentially the same. It's play Fiddlebender and equip it. Now I don't need Paradox Engine. Things get a little bit more interesting. So, the only part of my combo I'm missing now is my um, bouncing artifact dude. So I just need to turn a 3-drop into, into that guy. And I've got the Chromatic Lantern for that. I'm going to take one. Again, I don't imagine that they're going to tap out, but I could just wait until I've got a protection spell. Got plenty of them in my deck. I'll seed, Selfless Savior, Sheltering Light, Guardians of Koilos. Uh, that doesn't help all that much. If I could produce five mana, we win off of that, though. So I suppose what I might do is play my Aetherflux Reservoir. I could gain a lot of life. Like, I'm producing four mana. And spending five, so I could do it several times. Actually, no, he doesn't bounce himself. Uh, that's the wrong dude. I need the four drop one that bounces himself. Ah, uh, okay. In that case, I think I'm just going to draw with Arch, because the protection spell is our line to win here if our opponent's going to do nothing with their turn. I don't need this Guardian's... <laughs> Mana Tithe. <laughs> I can cast it, actually. Hilariously. Alright, I think I'll end step the Cryptic Caves. The mana that we really want is... Ooh, hits Reservoir. Well, if they go straight for the return, then I have the Mana Tithe value. But if they play their land first, then I don't. Do they dare do it, though? And can I win if they do? It is a sorcery speed, so they're going to have to do it on my turn. Still have ways of getting it back as well. And again, if they do it and it fails, they're going to lose. Shot of a sacrifice based effect. The devil is a huge pickup for them for sure. Personally, I would have gone for the Paradox Engine over the Reservoir, but I guess we can generally make some mana. Ooh, gotcha. All right. That might be the game over now. Uh, I'm going to crack Cryptic Caves, so we got some more to work with here. Yeah, land for a land. More lands. Works for me. Um, Fiddlebender. X proof. Um, draw. Manifold key. Guess I could get that out. Um, yeah, I've got no use for infinite mana. No use for any kind of untaps. So we pass a turn. And I believe there is a world where I can maneuver the win here. <laughs> Storm's Wrath. Wow. Okay. 
lives to fight another day. More planes. Not ideal. Oops. God, I hate that undo button. It's right over the manifold key. <laughs> Alright, let's get that floated. Let's float that. Let's float that. I've not decided if I need all of this mana yet, but... The option's there. Why tap my arch? It's literally the only move I can make. That is, uh... That's a thing. Um... Opponent's upset that they're losing. I actually have infinite mana, but yeah, I can't really do out with it. And I've had my fun. Alright. Okay. So, opponent accepting defeat through the use of emote spam, probably. Won't get ahead of myself. My opponent clearly has, but... Guess at this point they're figuring out whether or not they're dead. Which, uh... Is hard for me to say. I think if I... Hmm... I think with Lotus Manifold Key, I can turn the Lantern into my Guardians. Not my Guardians. I can never remember the name of it. Uh, sure, let's get rid of the snow-covered planes. This is one of those scenarios where that Arch of Araska could potentially be very useful because our opponent could make us discard here, and if I cared about this Guardians of Coilus, then that would certainly be... Uh, Important. Right, so. Let's float a lot of mana. I think we'll start with Chromatic Sphere. And we're going to turn this Chromatic Lantern into Hedron Archive. Oh, maybe Mystic Forge, actually. Yeah, definitely Mystic Forge. Uh, that's going to allow us to uh, pump right through the deck. So we're going to turn this sphere into Terrarian. Untap Gilded Lotus. Play the Terrarian, which we're going to sack. Uh, we don't need Banishing Light, so let's see if we can find something else on the top. Oh game. That's pretty good. Alright, so untap here. So what are we looking for? We're looking for scrap trawler. So I'm going to try and turn my terrarian into a scrap trawler at some point. Uh, scry to the bottom. Crack with mystic forge. ECD. Don't care about that. Uh, let's Flow, unflow. I'm probably not going to need as much mana as I've got, but there's a possibility that I kind of let loose on my infinite mana at some point to try and win the game. So Terrarian is going to draw me a card. There's a Maze Mind Tome on top. Terrarian becomes something else, and then that Maze Mind Tome stops being on top. We're going to go with Ica Wellspring here, I guess. Draw a card, it's going to be a treasure vault. So now we can play the treasure vault. There is an Al Seed on top. So we're going to use some of our Guardians of Coilos mana. Or some of our mana for Guardians of Coilos, should I say. Um, get rid of the Al Seed. Sheltering Light. That's potentially worth a... Uh, worth a look -see. We'll bounce our Manifold Key. Float white. Untap. Need to be a little bit quicker here. Nope, nope. I've had enough. I'm, I'm sure they were busy emote spamming me and then got bored of it, but... Uh, 
Yeah, um, we're definitely in an unlosable situation. It's just all about how we go about getting it. So this uh, Ica Wellspring is going to become a um, a scrap trawler. But I kind of wanted to maneuver in such a way that uh, I could maybe get the sheltering light to go. So I think the way that the death trigger on this works is that I can get that sheltering light, uh, which means I can give my uh, scrap trawler indestructible in case this is a removal spell, for example, uh, which I think is quite important. Uh, I could also draw with Arch of Araska. We've got 10 mana as well, so I could use five of that, six technically in total, uh, to draw the sheltering light to give us that little bit of protection. Uh, there's no exile-based effect, I don't think, for two mana in instant speed. Uh, not that I can think of, anyway. It'd be pretty absurd if there was, but um, yeah, I think we've maneuvered the win there, and uh, our opponent... Probably realized it 10 hours ago, but they thought it was more entertaining to spam the sleepy hedron. Either way, on to the next one. Alrighty, we are on the play. This hand is almost good. If any of these mana rocks were three mana rocks or... Uh, a box amber. I would be all for this, but they're not. They're actually a potential tutor target, so I'm going to hit the mull on that one. And this one's a three lander with a replicating ring. So this is basically what we're looking for with a hand. Uh, minus a protection spell. And we got a couple draws to find it. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Tapped Anger. We're playing against Dina Soul Steeper. Golgari Legend. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. And then you pay one to sacrifice another creature. Dina Soul Steeper gets plus X plus O until the end of the turn, where X is the sacrifice creature's power. It's actually part of an infinite, um, infinite combo. Uh, with uh, Exquisite Blood, I think, which says the exact opposite of this, which basically chains infinitely until we die. Um, so if I went Fiddlebender and he died, I would be essentially okay with that, I think. We did draw a Firemind's Vessel, which is usually the target for Fiddlebender off of a 3-drop. But since we got it in hand, we can turn this ring into a Hedron Archive instead and play a Maze Mind Tome. Which opens up the Scry. It's going to sign in Blood. Alright. So, let's go Replicating Ring. Let's turn it into a Hedron Archive. There is a Mystic Forge as well, but I think we want to start off at the right footing with... Uh, we could actually go Solemn as well. Solemn we can turn into Paradox Engine and draw a card, and also it ramps. Maybe that's worth it. Yeah, let's do that. To beat down threat if our combo goes horribly wrong as well. Which I think has some value. So I don't mind really just establishing ourselves here because we're not going to be winning next turn anyway. We are going to be setting up a win but not getting there. It's hard to say though whether or not this line's good because that's definitely going to be a thing that happens. Wrath of God, not going to do me much good there. So I think we'll go with the Fire Mines Vessel, play our land drop for the turn so we've got lots of mana to work with. And pass the turn over. So happy to dirtle for a little bit, for sure. We could dirtle long enough to find ourselves... Uh, a protection spell for Oswald. Though it took them until turn three to remove it. Oh, using a three mana spell. Inquisition, help yourself. You won't actually hit anything really relevant. Maze Mind Tome, not a big loss for us. And Timoret calls the dead. Alright, so it's going to make some tokens. Oh, it's not going to make any tokens. <laughs> Fair play. Uh, so, 
Oswald costs four mana now. It's going to cost six mana. We can pay for that as well. Love that sound. It's beautiful. All right. I'm just going to keep making my opponent have removal for it. Exile a creature enchantment. Well, they hit a few then. So they have a zombie. And next turn they get to gain one, scry one. Currently. It's based off the number of zombies of control and Dina is not a zombie, I don't believe. Dryad Druid. There you go. Memorial. So I will say that the cards we currently have available don't particularly aid me for a win next turn. I don't believe it's actually really even possible. Mortality Spear. Totally fine. Oswald's dead again. Oh dear. That's a bad draw. Really didn't need that. Alright, well, Oswald again. You can still pay for him next turn. He's getting very expensive though, but he is a crucial part of our combo, so... Gonna do our best to run our opponent out of removal. They perhaps have another one? Plum the Forbidden. Okay. So, no scry and gain life there, because he's at the zombie. Does Plum get rid of artifacts? Just creatures. Alright, I was wondering why they eyed up their Fountain of Renewal. I'm sure Dina's just kind of hanging around in the command zone, because they're waiting for... I get my draw, that's nice. Uh, they're waiting for their combo to be established. Banishing Light, okay. Well, they used a board wipe to get rid of Fiddlebender. Now it's going to be a little bit tricky because next time he dies, he's actually not going to be able to come back unless we draw another land or a mana rock. That's certainly going to be uh, less than ideal. And we haven't exactly built up a, a hand of useful tools either. These are all not dying tools and we don't have any trouble right now of not dying in this matchup. Uh, Hunnan doesn't understand my combo, I don't think. But uh, sure, on to the next one. Alrighty then, we're on the play. This hand is, I think by all accounts, unacceptable. We got a combo piece in our hand, we don't want it there. So this is a six card hand already. It has no mana rocks. Yeah, free mull. Uh, this has a combo piece. It has a protection spell, which could be useful. And it has a mana rock. So yeah, I think we've got everything we need here. The Paradox Engine's not doing much for us, admittedly in this hand, but, uh, yeah, this should work out just fine, I think. So turn two, Oswald, T turn three, Banner. Hit our opponent for one. We'll get into what our opponent's playing in just a second, because it is a spicy commander. Rin and Siri, inseparable. One and Naya colors for a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever you cast a dog spell, create a 1-1 one, one green cat. Whenever you cast a cat spell, Create a 1-1 white dog. Then you can pay Naya and tap it, and Rin and Siri deals damage to any target equal to the number of dogs you control, and you gain life equal to the number of cats. So it's cat-dog tribal. We draw Glass Casket. Uh, not too interested in firing that off just yet. I think it's much better for us to go banner here and uh, upgrade this banner. So we're going to go and do that. We'll get ourselves a Firemines Vessel. Normally we would turn that 4-drop four four into uh, a Paradox Engine, but we already have that. So really what we want to do is find more um, Vanishing Light. Well, that's a good answer to Oswald. It's a good job we kind of ramped into not being fussed about. Our oh, okay. 
I can Skyclave Apparition. That's totally fine. Interesting choice. Wouldn't say it's wrong. Uh, but it's not exactly going to feel right once I do this. <laughs> Let's get that back. They've bought themselves at least a turn. Uh, I don't think we could have won in this position, but... They've certainly done a thing. So we've got Search for Glory, which... Yeah, people... People think they understand this combo, I think. But uh, I don't believe they do. So usually the, the line is 4-drop into Paradox Engine. And then you try to go off from there. There is a potential turn 4 kill with this deck, but... Um, yeah, I certainly don't have the board state for it. So... Bit weird conceding after playing a Bronze Hide Lion and a Banishing Light. And just saying that's good. Maybe they missed their fourth land drop. I guess that could be a, a thing that they're doing. But, uh, yeah. On to the next one. Alrighty, we're in. And this hand is fine. Certainly fine. Currently 9 and 0 with uh, this Oswald Fizzlebender list, so I'm going to go ahead and say it's at least good enough to make your opponents concede. I don't know if it's good enough uh, if your opponents refuse to concede. We've had a lot of people conceding when the combo hasn't been established, so uh, yeah, it's, it has some tilt factor. We'll say that much. So we're on the draw. We've got a turn 1 Terrarian. We've got a God's Willing to protect Oswald Fiddlebender on turn 3. And a Gift of Estates as well to make sure that we never miss our land drops ever. Our opponents on Kalia, Zenith Seeker. And yep, we're going to keep this one. Uh, Mardu 3-3 three, three with Flying and Vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, you look at the top six cards of your library and reveal an Angel, a Demon, and or a Dragon card from among them put into your hands. It's kind of like a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three with good stats that draws three potentially. So it's demons, dragons, and uh, angels, tribal. It's pretty cool. I like it. Played it on the channel once before, but I think we played it a long time ago when it was actually a standard brawl list, maybe. That's what I want to say. Alright. So I don't think I'm interested in firing off Fiddlebender into... A very obvious removal spell. Because I don't think it gets us very far. Could attack their mana base with Ghost Quarter. I don't think that's really a good idea either. Uh, what about cracking Terrarian? Currently the Terrarian... Is... An upgrade to a 2-2 and a redraw. But I can't really play anything relevant off the mana that it will generate, so I think I'll just pass. Now if they play a land, I can go Gift of Estates and thin my deck a little bit. And then play my land drop. Assuming, of course, they don't miss their land drop, which I'm going to assume that they don't. Uh, because usually when people miss their land drops on turns uh, 3 and 4, they just concede a lot of the time. So... Let's go Gift of Estates, do a little bit of thinning. Not too hot on this card, honestly. It's not done in a, quite the work that I uh, would imagine it would, but, I mean, it's thinning, so it works. We can go Solemn Simulacrum, or we could play the Oswald Fiddlebender. I think it's Oswald's this turn, because I can play God's Willing to protect it, and then go Solemn Land, turn it into Paradox Engine. I have no mana rocks, so it's not going to do me too much just at the moment. I guess it would open up my Paradox Engine to uh, Artifact Removal, which they're in the colours for, of course. Disenchants and Bedevils and things like that. And the Braids. Just gonna pass. Alright. We 
Well. Odd spot to be in. I kind of want to just play Solemn. And see what happens. Yeah, I mean... My concern is... I protect with God's willing. They remove in response. So, like... You know, we get some value out of it for sure, but we lose the battle anyway, and I'm forced to replay my uh, Fiddlebender anyway. Our bod state's not in a winning position right now to begin with, so... Just gonna dirtle a little bit more, I think. My experience, Kalia doesn't really just win. You end up seeing a lot of uh, very large creatures and they don't come out for nine hours. So there's a gold span dragon. Okay. And we got a castle, Ardenvale. Well, let's just go with uh, Inventor's Fair. Let's play the Fiddlebender. This guy's um, God's Willing plus Teferi's Protection. So a little less uh, concerned about removal, protection, removal as a line. We're going to be turning this Solemn, though, into something quite nice, I would say. Goldspan Dragon's uh, a little bit of a beatdown threat, but we started 25, so less concerned about it. More concerned with the follow-up plays from our opponent. Now that their treasures are producing double the amount of mana. But it looks like they're... Oh. I'll whiff that entirely. Mortify. You will be mortified. <laughs> Alright, cool. Uh, yes, absolutely. When it thinks that was lovely. I agree, honestly. I think that was very lovely. Alright. My permanents don't exist. They have three mana. My turn, my upkeep. And bedevil. Sure. That's fine. Uh, yep, to the command zone. Good for them. Let's go Chromatic Lantern and Fiddlebender. They're on three cards now. The early game tends to be a lot of removal. So even now, I don't really imagine my Fiddlebender's got much help of winning, but I'd say that's a pretty good indication that this is going to go our way. Two mana remaining. I've got the mana to replay Oswald if they kill it. Which they didn't. Alright. So now. We are going to turn Solemn into Paradox Engine. And we're going to try and go off now. We didn't draw Paradox Engine. That would be the worst case scenario. So Paradox Engine down. We're then going to play Ica Wellspring, draw a card. Vanishing Light. That's fine. Um, float the white here to turn Ica Wellspring and draw a card. Guardian Idol, that's really useful. Uh, we want a Mana Rock. Let's go with... I don't think it particularly matters. Uh, let's go with Mana Geode, I guess, because we could crack the Terrarian. Guardian Idol. So now producing a little bit of mana every turn. White, white. Crack the terrarium for white, white. Get Mystic Forge. 
Yep, let's do Mystic Forge. Crack Mystic Forge. Go white, colorless, white. Um, I'm gonna fiddle bend actually, I think. So it will manipulate the top of my library. Let's get rid of Mana Geode, just in case we need the Inventor's Fair for white. Uh, one, two. Let's go Hedron Archive for now. Uh, replicating Ring, that's huge. Mana Tide, less so. Let's see if we can get something else. Guardians of Koilos. Uh, is that a thing I want to play? Actually, what have we got now? Two, three, four, five. Oh, we've got infinite mana now. Um, Bounce Guard Ancestral Statue. So we're actually going to turn... Uh, Chromatic Lantern into Aetherflux Reservoir. And that's the win, short of this being a removal spell. Okay. If it is a removal spell, we have to manipulate a little bit more. Uh, we turn Guardian Idol into Scrap Trawler. And then we work on getting our board state back up to a point where we can sack a 5-drop Gilded Lotus uh, in order to get back the Ancestral Statue and then begin the combo again. We do have brought back uh, on top of our library. I don't think we've got a way of actually drawing it, though. Because uh, you can't play it with Mystic Forge, so... Yeah, it's a pretty sweet card. I've used it a few times, and uh, it has a lot of effect, but it certainly does not when it's in on top of the library. But yeah, lo lots of tools here with Scrap Trawler, so... If we get rid of any 3-drop, uh, which we will probably want to do at some point, uh, then we can get back Ica Wellspring, start drawing cards. Once we get ri rid of Ica Wellspring, it gets back as Terrarians, and that should hopefully generate us some mana with our Paradox Engine shenanigans. And yeah, pretty good. Well, that is going to do it for today's video, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed, and if you have, leave a like down below. Let me know what you guys have been playing down in the comments section as well. And uh, hit the subscribe button if you do enjoy Historic Brawl content. We're going to be making quite a fair bit of it uh, over the coming weeks, as well as uh, Historic and Standard 2022, and uh, maybe a draft video. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But uh, yeah, if you do enjoy any of that content, then make sure to hit that sub button and uh, hit the bell icon so you get notifications when those videos go live in the future. Take care and have a wonderful night.